Hello, my name is Ever McKinney and I am an Information Assistant with John Marshall Library. Today's tutorial goes along with these fun earrings we're going to make using chainmail techniques. I've led similar programs in person on chainmail, but this is my first video since we still have to practice social distancing. You can pick up these earrings as a kit from John Marshall Library during the week of January 25th, but keep in mind that supplies are limited. You might even want to call first to see if John Marshall still has them. So today in this video, I'm going to tell you about what's in your kit and show you some tools that you'll have to provide on your own, and then I will walk you through building these earrings step by step. Now I'd like to show you what comes in your kit that you can pick up from John Marshall. You will find a small pile of jump rings to work with. For those of you who like measurements, these rings are 16 gauge and measure about 8 millimeters on the inside. Because this is a beginner project, I'm not quite as worried about everyone focusing on measurements, but gauge and diameter are important in the world of chainmail. You will also find six plastic pearl beads that measure roughly six millimeters. You will also have a pair of French hook earrings. And I've included two silicone earring backers in case you like to use these with your earrings. Now I'd like to show you what you will have to provide on your own. These pliers are tools that are unfortunately not part of the kit you will get from John Marshall, so you will have to supply this part. But if you are interested in acquiring your own pliers, you can find them at lots of commercial craft stores now, including places like Michael's and Joanne Fabrics. Your pliers are a very important part of this process, and you will need two sets. Many people use two sets of needle nose or chain nose pliers. You can see that these taper up almost to a point. These are very popular. I personally prefer to work with one set of the chain nose and one set of flat nose pliers because I like the grip of the flat nose pliers. You can see that these are much wider than the needle nose up top. As you learn how to make your own chain mail, you will also have your own preferences. Now, let's get started on your earrings. First things first, you'll want to have a number of open jump rings ready to use. In case this is your first time, I will show you how to properly open a jump ring. Pick up your jump ring with one set of pliers and make sure you can see the gap where the ring joins together here. With the other set of pliers, gently grasp the other side of the ring and twist to open. It is very important that you do not pull the rings apart like this one because they are very difficult to get back into shape. See that one's pretty much ruined. Always open your jump ring from side to side. To close it, just reverse the direction you took to open the ring, and that will give you a flush closing. Go ahead and take the time to open at least 28 jump rings for this project. That'll be 14 jump rings for each earring, and that'll be great practice for you if you have never opened or closed jump rings before. And remember to open from side to side. Never pull the rings apart. Now, let's find one of your French hook earrings. Now that you have some open jump rings to work with, take one of those jump rings and hook it onto the bottom loop of your French hook. Now close the ring. Remember to twist from side to side when closing jump rings. And from here, the French hook will act as an anchor for you. An anchor is always good to have for chainmail because it will help you keep track of your starting point. Okay, on this first ring, we are going to attach two more rings. You'll take another open ring, hook it onto that first ring, and close it. Now 
Then you'll hook another ring right next to it and close that one. By now, you should have a French hook, a single ring, and then two rings next to each other. We want to attach two more rings to the two that are hanging here. So we will hook one open ring onto both of those rings and close. Then next to that last ring we just did, we'll hook another ring and close that one. So now you should have the French hook, one single ring, a set of two rings on that single ring, and then two rings hanging off those two rings behind it. Now we are ready to add our first pearl. This is tricky, so please feel free to pause and rewind and take your time practicing this part. So let's start by pinching the first single ring between your fingers like so, just to get a grip on everything. And then drop these last two rings down either side of your middle rings. So now your two middle rings should be sticking up in the air like this. You want to split them almost like a little mouth and then place your pearl in the space between these middle rings. This almost looks like you're putting a pearl in somebody's mouth. And then very carefully you're going to fold up the rings on the side around the pearl until they touch up top. Then, and now you look like you have a little cage or a pod. So take another open jump ring and hook that through where those two rings are now touching and close that ring. Next to it, you'll hook a second open jump ring through where those two rings were touching and close that one. All right, and now you should have your first pearl. Okay, so now we are going to add our second pearl. So first we'll take another open jump ring and hook it to your last two rings. And we'll close that one. Then we want a second jump ring next to that one, so we'll hook that up down here and close. So now beneath your pearl cage you should have two jump rings and then two more jump rings. And then we're going to do something similar to what we did to the first pearl. So go ahead and grasp your pearl cage in between your fingers like so at the base of these two rings and then drop those last two rings from side to side. So your middle ring should be sticking up again and then you're going to want to split those rings open again. Drop your pearl in the middle and then fold up those rings that were on the side 
until they're touching here. We'll take another open jump ring and hook it onto where those two rings were touching and then close. And then we want another jump ring next to that one. So we'll hook that one through and close. All right, now we have your second pearl. Okay, everybody, this will be our last pearl. So let's take another open jump ring and hook it to our bottom two rings here and close. And then next to that we'll want to hook a second jump ring to those bottom two rings. We'll close that one. So underneath your second pearl cage, you should have two rings and then two more rings, like so. Now let's do what we did in the last step and grip the last pearl cage here between our fingers. And then we'll drop those two last rings to either side so that your two middle rings are sticking up again. And then we'll split them open like that little mouth. And then drop the pearl in the middle. And then we'll carefully fold up those side rings. And then we only have one more ring to go. This will be the ring that finishes off these earrings. So we'll just hook another open jump ring to where those two rings were touching and close. And then that concludes your first pearl earring. I am now out of time for today, but please feel free to repeat this video to make your second earring. And thank you so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you were able to get a kit from us at John Marshall Library. Please stay safe out there.